the goal is to step into that same space that Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, uh, all of them are in, and basically rob them. Brother, like Netflix, Netflix, Disney, and Amazon all roughly got 200 million subscribers. Mm. I'm looking at the game like if I can get that ain't even one percent of that, but if I can get like a point percent of that, which is one million people to commit in a year. Now we're talking about a network that's going to have like a $200 million valuation. Look, are you a coach, a consultant, a service provider, or a course creator? Listen, you want your clients to pay you $3,000 to $10,000 for your program? You want to stop nickel and diamond. You want three to $10,000 clients? Listen, I got a special gift for you, okay? This is from my friend, my buddy, and a coach of mine. He helped me make $30,000 in a week. My first time making $30,000 in a week, I had six 5K clients, okay? He helped me. Listen, it works even if you don't have a big following. As a result, his program has accumulated $250 million in revenue for his clients. Do you want part of that? Listen, there's a personal endorsement from my boy, no cap. I'll show you the receipts. You get free access. Go to socialproofgift.com or text PROOF to 904-447-5274. All right, let's get into the episode. All right, let me tell you about this all-natural soap company called Urban Eden. Okay, listen, you've probably seen them everywhere. You might have seen them on episode 75 of the Social Proof Podcast. Really, really amazing. Sat down with the owners. If you're looking for an all-natural soap company, I need somebody you can trust. Go to urbaneden.com. Okay, listen, if you are dealing with like these skin issues like eczema, acne, psoriasis, dry skin, hyperpigmentation, you need Urban Eden, okay? We're going to throw away that commercial soap, all that stuff you see on the on the shelves. You need some stuff that's really, really all natural for your skin, okay? You know, we got different skin. Listen, and they're doing something special for social proofers. First time customers, if you go to UrbanEden.com, you'll get a free sample pack with your first order, meaning you got like Three, four, well, four, I think it's four, yeah. You have four bars of soap to try to find out what you like before you actually commit to the whole bar, okay? So go to urbaneden.com. They believe in it so much to give you free stuff, okay? So urbaneden.com, H-E-R-B-N-E-D-E-N, it's right here, dot com. Use promo code socialproof. Y'all know y'all gonna save some money, all right? Urban Eden, I stamped them. I use a soap. You're gonna love it, all right? Back to the episode. All right, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find dope people that did dope stuff. It doesn't get uh, much doper than the gentleman sitting to my left. Uh, oh, yeah, no doubt. You know you don't. You already know, <laughs> right? Um, but last time we actually tried this interview, we was in Tampa, and five minutes into it, all the lights go yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about to be a good conversation, too. Maybe we'll play that clip. just start getting good. Right, right, right. right. We are here, um, Mr. Derek Grace. We definitely got to get the elephant out of the room because um, you make almost $11 million Mm -hmm. in 2020. Mm -hmm. And then 2021, you say, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not teaching classes. I'm not going to make 11 million how I made 11 million last year. I'm going right, to do right, whatever, right. something different. Right. Which I'm still, even though I talked to you, I still don't understand it. I got you, bro. <laughs> Can you explain this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, bro, one main thing, like I was saying before, this year, well, not even to- in total this year, but lately I've been more focused on self care and just doing things for myself. So money isn't, money is the motivation, but it's not. If I could put it like that. But more so, I've been focused on me and my wants and my needs and what my family need. Or like, you know, just doing things for myself. Like, I've over-taught and over-educated everybody else's family since 2012. So that's one main reason. And reason number two is uh, I found a way to make, like, way more money than that, but not have to do as much work. And it'd be something that I genuinely enjoy doing. So that's really... And to be honest with you, bro, I've, I've made nowhere near... We only ate going on nine months through the year, I've made, I haven't made what I made last year, this year, but that's because like money really isn't the focal point this year. Like I'm, like I'm happy as hell. Like that's way more important than the money. So yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't take it back though. 2020 was, right. I had a blast. I'm glad I made all that money because I made some dope plays that's put us in a better position. But this year I'm more so just focused on myself and then working smarter and not harder to, to have a billion dollar business you know, and some, doing something I actually have fun doing. Why can't you just do both? Bro, because I'm going to be honest with you. If it's not fun, I'm not really engaging. I'm not, I'm no good. 
That's but the best he, way yo, to put it. All right, yo, check this out. Repeating gotta... myself to grown people out there ain't fun no more. I know, I know, I know. But if there's... The website is going to do numbers regardless. Mm-hmm. All the stuff that you did, content, mm-hmm. people still understand what the post-Trump pack is and right. all the stuff that you got going on. Mm-hmm. I just don't see why we got to shut down the whole website. Because you don't have to necessarily teach them. You just make it available. And whoever won it, they go get it. So I agree, right? But I'm also one of those people that I like. I don't believe in... And this could be wrong. But I don't believe in waiting on people to support me. Like, you're going to support me while I'm in this space that I want to be supported or you'll miss it. So I'm cool with, like, people not being able to buy it no more. Or, like, bro, I got to wear... I know we at least got... We at least got 14,000 board games or board games left. But I'm cool with sitting on them and just not making no bread before I just like allow people to support me on their time. I'm straight. You got 14,000 games left. Easily, I know we got 14. Board games alone, not including books, curriculums, I know we got 14,000 games. Because I ordered like 17,000 not too long ago. I know we got another 14. Hold on, you, did you order 17,000 before you decided to quit? Yeah, it was before. All right, so here's the thing. Let me get them joints. I'm gonna put up a. I'm gonna put up a site. <laughs> Derek Gray's two is that much gonna be like a number two? Yeah, yeah. And let me. I'm not ready. They gonna they gonna go for sure. How yeah. you gonna do it? But you're not selling them no more. I mean, because that's not my interest. So when I get re-interested in that, or I feel like it's worth it, I'll do it. But one thing about me, like I, I'm I'm big on tunnel vision. So once mm-hmm. I lock in on something, I really don't want to hear about nothing else, see nothing else, or nothing. Just let me perfect what I'm doing. And then I'll think about other stuff. That's another level. Of, that's another level of focus. Yeah. It yeah, really no, I, is. Like, I don't even want to be attached to nothing that's going to distract me from where I'm going. Bro, I get it every day. Like, it'll be something in the news that's trending with the culture. Or anything. People are like, why aren't you talking about this? Why aren't you? I'm like, listen, I'm in my bag right now, okay? Yeah. And I ain't talking about money. Like, mentally, I'm in my bag. Leave me alone. Don't bother me with nothing on nothing. And just let me focus on, you know, the, the task I have. It take me a year or two to get it done. And holler at me about a year in a year or two mm-hmm. with some other business. How old are you now? 32. I just turned 32 last week. Just turned 32. Mm-hmm. So you, obviously, it's not like you're retiring, period. You're just like channeling your focus into another area. Absolutely. I don't want to. It's still going to be a level of teaching technically, mm-hmm. but it won't be in the form of literature. It won't be in the form of y'all getting a course, y'all get your bundle, get your book, or me being on Zoom for six hours talking to 5,000 people. No, I ain't, I'm, I'm good on that. So, okay. So, do you have like a number that you want to get to where you're done everything? Like, I'm not teaching. I'm not putting out no nothing. Yeah. So, the goal is I want DGTV to be a billion-dollar company by my 35th birthday. So, I got three years. And once it has a billion-dollar evaluation, I'll be comfortable not doing nothing. So, DGTV? I think I, think I will. Cause look, bro, like oh, yeah. I'm not, I don't plan on slowing down on having children at any at any, any time soon, and I want my children to have a vast amount of options. Some of them may not ever want to work. Some of them may not want to be entrepreneurs. Some of them may just want to read books or walk or skip around the house all day and sing songs till they're 50 years old. And I want them to have that luxury to where like I literally spent my entire life doing whatever I wanted to do. Never, mm-hmm. never did what I felt like I had to do or society said you're supposed to do. So in order for them to have that luxury, I have to have a whole, whole, whole lot of capital. So I feel that. I, I feel think that. a company at a billion dollar valuation, I'll be able to maneuver that enough where they could they could pull that off if they want to. All right. And that brings us to another point. Um, the study shows that 80% of millionaires are first generation millionaires. Like, mm-hmm. so out of a hundred millionaires, 80% got it out the mud. Right. With you affording your kids a lifestyle where they mm-hmm. just, <laughs> that was funny, sit and walk around the house and sing songs. Yeah, bro, visual. whatever they want to do, I just want them to be able to do that. Do you feel like that could cripple them, though? In terms of they don't have to, I, I believe a good struggle mm-hmm. makes something of you. You know what I mean? Like no, with, I agree. With Truett Cathy, with Chick-fil-A, mm-hmm. you don't just get your own store. Like, you got to work the register. Right. And you feel me? So you don't have that fear for your kids? Uh... No, nah, bro, I don't. Uh, I know what you mean because I did have that fear at one point in life, but I don't look at it like that no more. I just look at it like as I study them, I could, I kind of see like who's lazy, who's a little lazy, who just <laughs> out of control. And it, it just clicked one day. It was last year. It just clicked like, because I remember thinking to myself like, yeah, I'm going to lead them businesses and that. And I'm like, 
what if they don't care nothing about business? What if they, like, have no interest in running or doing anything? And I was like, hmm, I want them to have that option too. But no, I'm I'm not fearful of it. Um, I do agree a good struggle. You said a good struggle makes for a good story, Absolutely. right? Not for, for good character. Good character. builds you, yeah. Right. But I do also believe that um, taking heed to the game that's given to you mm-hmm. and, the, and the examples in front of you, you know, can also lead a good character too. So I'm going to say this, bro. I'm not sure. It's going to be a toss-up. Right. When they 50, <laughs> when they 30 and 40, I'll see then, like, man, did I play that the right way? Right. Or I'll find out. I feel that, though. Kind of like yeah. li- living in the moment. What feels right right now in the right. future to take care of itself? Absolutely. So you're not interested in, like, legacy, like, y'all passed down the business to my kids and my kids' kids and the great... What if... Mm-mm. Okay. What if the great... You got a, you got a dope name, first off. Appreciate it, bro. Just grace, right? Like. Right. The grace legacy. You're not looking a couple generations down saying, yo, I want the graces to be like the, I don't know, the Biltmores or the the Trumps. They're building a legacy. Yeah, yeah. You don't care nothing about that. I do. But I trust that. I trust myself enough to put up uh, almost like a, a, um, a monetary bulletproof vest that they'll, they'll be okay either way. Mm. I ain't so I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna be real. I'm not banking on them to run it. I'm banking on me to foresee it good enough that they don't have to run it. The machine will already be well oiled and built, and they just have to step in and play their position and enjoy the life I built for them. I like this different perspective. Yeah. I gotta get back to like Derek. First of all, what was your first tattoo? That'd be interesting. Uh, it's an A. It look when it's not an A. It looks like an A. It's an ancient symbol of strength. It's on one of these sides, bro. I don't even that remember. One, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an A with two lines. Those are look like though. That was the very first one. That's the very first one I got on my face. No, no, no I'm talking about period. Oh, my first tattoo, period. I was about to say that you were it's straight a G. for the face. Oh no, nah. <laughs> it's a G on my chest. Uh, um, really like that big, bro. I almost cried when I got that tattoo. What? But I fell in love after that. Then I just went crazy. What, what was your thought process behind getting it the first time? Um, How old were you? I think I was like, I had to be 16. I was in 12th grade. Mm-hmm. So I was 16 going on 17 when I got my first one. But thought process, it really wasn't one, bro. Me and my cousin just went out. I was like, five was like, we should get tattoos, even though they told us not to. And we just went and did it. Did they all get something on their chest? All y'all got it on the chest or just? Nah, one was the hands. One of them, one, one of my cousins got his hands and his chest done at this, that same day for the first time. Everybody else went, they went in the easiest spot, like the arm or the hand or something. Gotcha. So, G on the chest was the ne- next one. Do you remember? I don't remember after that. No. Did, did it become a, an addiction? I never got one. I never got one. I was going to. For but... me, bro, it's, it serves, well, back then, it served as like a, a coping mechanism. And I can't say, I, I will say it can be mm. addictive too because. Um, oh, I'm sorry, back, back up, back up. A coping mechanism. Explain that. So, some people, they go like, everybody got their vices. Some people, they meditate when they upset or they dealing with something. Some people are gonna go train real hard. I used to like to get tattoos. So like that, that pain and uh and the expression through the tattoo actually can serve as a coping mechanism for people. Mm. Like for a lot of people, that's when they close a the chapter, they'll tattoo it, and then that's it. It's permanent now, it's done, it's over, and move on. That's so mm-hmm. they close the chapter of whatever's going on, it's permanent, it's with me. Right. And then you move on. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. And you never... Okay, the first one on the face was the A. Yeah. How old were you there? 2012. I'm 21, 22. Somewhere from there. Thought process. Give me that. Oh, bro. I, I just didn't want to work for nobody no more. And that was the goal. I was like, how do we make ourselves unapproachable, unhirable? I had just watched a documentary with Mike Tyson, and Mike was saying how he, he used to already defeat his opponents just based off body language and eye contact. And my cousin was boxing at the same time. That's why we were studying Mike to begin with. Mm-hmm. And I just started really, um, I just really started tapping in on like mental gymnastics and learning how to like intimidate or sway or quiet, like body language wise, just quietly. You could interrupt people or you mm-hmm. could calm people. And once I started learning like the, the mechanics of body language, I started doing more of my appearance. Because at this point, like I didn't have to say anything anymore. You knew I was in the room because you, when you looked at my face, like it caught your attention off the rip. Then once I opened my mouth and began to articulate, it's a wrap. Hold on. So first off, you get the tattoo on your face mm-hmm. so that you won't get a job. 
Right, right. Just in case you ever think about getting a right, job. Right. <laughs> that, that was a, and see, we're like, I got that one. And by, so like, dope, by like a week later, I had a total of eight. Like, I remember one day I got hit up like four times in one day. I, a week later, you ate. You had eight. Yeah, I had like eight. I I, I jumped quick. I jumped quick with them, um, cause the pain not that bad. Mm. So once I got the first, I'm like, well, it wasn't that bad. I'm like, cool. And I remember looking in the mirror like, damn, I don't look crazy enough though yet. Like we gotta, I can still get a job with this. Like that's <laughs> that's, that's that small. And my and then my cousin's like, you right, cousin? You need to get some more. Stay late. <laughs> <laughs> I had like literally it was it had because I remember my daddy saying like. Damn, son, son, it's been five days. You got all that. I remember literally, bro, within a week, I had a total of eight. And I was just like, oh, this ain't bad at all. I could, I, I could do that. And then we just kept going. I don't know. I think last I checked was over like a year ago. I was at like 43, but I ran out of room now, so I'm done with the face. My question is, though, why do you want to look intimidating? So not intimidating. It's a form of expression. But I began to see how intimidating... It was when I would be amongst people because I be, I was still an entrepreneur at this time. So I was fresh in entrepreneurship, actually mm. like a money. In. But I began to see like how the confusion and the unknown will actually work, can work in your favor when you're dealing with people because they kind of don't know which way to go. Because I'm a very cool comic collector. I don't say much. And then I look like this. But on the back end, like I'm well articulated. I'm, I'm very distinguished, but... I just started to see like how how you can like literally redirect the room or control it with no words, just based off your presence, your eye contact, mm. and your visual. So from there, like I start I start utilizing those tactics in actual business. It's been it's been plenty of people where I needed things to go in my favor. So giving them a firm handshake, making eye contact, and getting within like a foot of them, even though I was cool, I was chilling. But I just saw how that assisted in me getting the, oh, yes, we could do that for you. We can make that happen. Mm. And I just went, I had, I peeped it from Mike, but I took what Mike Tyson said and we just ran with it. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. So it, it's all into it. Like the way you shake your hand, the way you look in somebody's face, like, right. bro, we're going to get contract, this deal done. The, the, the family unit, the, the, every, the vicinity, bro, everything. It's Good. all intentional. Good. It's all intentional. <laughs> I've never seen you with like less than 20 people. Okay. Yeah. So is that is that a part of it? I mean, well, I do like the team close. We build it nonstop. Um, I do like business-led missions. I mean, women-led missions. So you're gonna predominantly see women with me all the time. I think they, I just think they execute much better than having like a male team. And they also provide like a level of peace and calmness as well as execution. Mm. So for me, um, I'm always, that's how I, that's how I always, I've never been big with, I mean, if you go through my IG, you see it's not a lot of men on there. Like I just yeah. don't be around men, but no, we always keep the team intact. I'm big on people practicing inclusion, especially with their children. So I'm always have either one or two of my children or all of them, depending on the environment. But yeah, bro. And, and, and I'm family, I'm family based. So yeah, I, I like, I like to have a, a secluded circle with me. Like, right. I like to have 20 people with me, but hide us in our section. We don't, I like 20 people, but it got to be my 20 people. Gotcha. That's, the, that's the best way to put it. So, all right. So, are these... So, everybody that's, like, rolling with you, right? Mm -hmm. Are... I know a good portion is family, right? Mm -hmm. What what part of staff? And, like, what do people do on the team? And... That's, that's a good question. Uh... I don't really look at it as staff. I get what you mean, though, because that's what they are staff, but I just look at it like this this the circle. So um somebody gotta add value though. Oh no, for sure. I'm like you said, if, if, yeah. if you're around, you're like, yo, bro, what you doing? Yeah, yeah. So of the team right now, um, Mama Temple over there, that's uh my mother in love, not law. Mm -hmm. But her and my mom, they tend to our children. I got a football team work. I mean basketball <laughs> team. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to the children, though. They make sure they're good. They make sure that they, she makes sure the house in order, everything mm -hmm. running smoothly. Uh, just the small stuff, bro. Like, because I be moving so fast and I'm not the most hospitalic person. I know mm -hmm. I just made that word up. That was but a good one. She going to make sure people got drinks and snacks when it comes to the career. When we in the meeting, she going to make sure everybody hydrated. Uh, Liz, she going to execute. Um, I just throw her ideas and she just, you know, take it to the end zone. Tyrese. He a part of the network as well as Liz. Um, 
And Ty- Tyrese just get a lot done on the back end. Like, even 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 in the EYL event, bro, like, and it bothered me for a second, but people kept handing him their cameras to take pictures. I'm like, he is not y'all designated <laughs> picture man. But he just had, he just... Which he just, one? Which one? Who? Right there. Oh, okay. okay just, gotcha, he'll gotcha. knock it out, though. Right, right. He'll knock it out, then he'll get on camera and shoot something for the network, run to the store to mm-hmm. make sure we got the obstacle courses, everything. Uh, Gabe. Gabe is right there next to Chelsea. Which one's Gabe? Uh... What's up, so good? He the plug, bro. He is. I keep him close, and I don't allow people to get access to him. Everybody be trying to get to him, and I be, I be hitting him with curveballs all day. <laughs> but he the plug, bro. From the board games to the video game, anything we ever done overseas, he oversee all that. Uh, he responsible for this family making millions and millions because I would not have those connections if he didn't have them. Um, uh, who else? Who else back right there? Khadija's is here. Major A one. You know, they're going to chase you down with the camera. Make sure the shots is right. Who's Major A1? Major over there in the black. Okay. A1 to the left in the blue. All right. Um, am I saying it right, bro? Y'all executive produce the things on the network, right? That's the right word? Okay. Something like that. His name pop up in the credits. I know Okay. That. Uh, Derek is standing up, waving her hand. Hey. She critiques our food while we're on like, the road. Bro, you better acknowledge me, first off. Yeah, she she critique our food while we're on the road, and she make all the complaints that we be trying to ignore or don't want to complain about. <laughs> She'll remind us that this blanket ain't big enough. This room too small. <laughs> da, da, that's her role. But she will be doing a lot on the network. She got a cooking show coming. She got some cool stuff coming on the network. Hold on. Um, How does she? How did? She just turned 10 in June. But I have a cooking show. Yeah, yeah. She's going to have a vegan cooking show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very lit. Uh, and Tabby. Tabby, what's the a- what's the actual title title? Hey, look, do you have a job that you hate? You got a nine to five, you're unhappy, you're living paycheck to paycheck? I get it. I get it. Have you ever tried a real estate? Getting in a real estate game? No, you haven't gotten to the real estate game because you think you need a whole bunch of money, you need perfect credit, you got to go to school, get a li- take a test, get a license, and then you can practice real estate. The good news is you ain't got to do none of that. My man, Mitt215, has been teaching people that are brand new how to get into the real estate game and start creating generational wealth, okay? He's even got some students that are making tens of thousands of dollars a month while they still have a job part-time in real estate. Listen, do yourself a favor. You need to go to 925flipping.com forward slash social proof. He got something special for you, okay? He's going to teach you the game. MIT215, 9to5flipping.com forward slash social proof. Or send him a text message, 410-883-9317. It's time to change your life, okay? Make sure you holler my boy MIT215. All right, let's get back into the episode. Executive assistant, so... Tabby just take the conversations and bring them to life, basically. Like, whatever we talking about, it'll appear in, like, five minutes. Okay. <laughs> and I saw that, bro. Me and my, my pops handled the payroll. He run the gun store. Uh, Alvin back there. That's that's who drew. Uh, that's my partner with the Alvin. art company, Grace Assets. Definitely got to ask answer a question for that, too. Um, I know I'm forgetting people. That's everybody who in the room, though, bro. Gosh. And Khadija is the brain trust. She, she, um... I want to say I think it and she make it happen, but we both think, bro. So she just, I don't even know. Bro, you know what? I need, We got to define brain trust. I asked, We was actually just talking about that yesterday. <laughs> we, we need a solid definition. So when somebody asks me, I could just run it, run right, it up. Right, but right. for the most part, bro, like she step in either where I can't or I don't want to and basically fill my shoes and still execute anything on my behalf. You no, know, it's kind of dope too because I, I, um, I have a pretty ex- ex- extensive team. Mm-hmm. But they all don't roll with me. I got you. Know you know what I mean? What is the what is the, the 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 psychology behind that? Like, yo, you you always need everybody close so we can execute together, or it seems like you just pick people you like and then say, yo, you good at this? <laughs> you the brain trust. Let's go. No, nah, no. Nah. So the closeness to me, bro, is good for the synergy. Cause I feel like I'm we we had a, we in a real creative space right now, especially with launching the network. So to, for me, it's best that we together so we can create on demand, like on, cause it's like, it hit different when the idea come to you at eight and you text it and then like, all right, cool. When I see you next week, we gone. But so I do, I like the closeness for the creativity. And then also bro, um, with having a network, we're able to shoot in real time what's going on. Right. So literally I'm gonna present these people, DGTV as a whole network while we on the back end shooting a docu-series on how we made a billion dollar network. 
Mm. So it's just a double win with having us here. We working while actively being on the show, while building, while processing ideas, while planning out our next month at the same time. So it just, it worked out perfectly. Got it. And I think yesterday I became your business partner without me knowing. What you mean? So oh, remember y'all, y'all, <laughs> like we was on stage mm-hmm. and... I mean, we got presented with the art. Yeah, like, yeah. First off, it was the dopest piece of art I ever received. And sure, it was on bro. a canvas. Quality was crazy. And I never had a picture painted of me that looks just like me. Yeah, yeah. I it got was you. crazy. Appreciate but it. after, mm-hmm. <laughs> he was like, yo, man, you like the paint? I said, yeah, it's dope. He said, all right, cool. Here's how this works. I've given it to you, but... We're going to turn it into an NFT. We're going to print it. We're going to put it on a mm-hmm. website. You make like a per- certain percentage off it. And I'm like, I'm like, hold, hold on. I, I don't know what you said. Okay. Yeah. It just seemed like uh, we're in business together now. Yeah. So can you explain what's going on with this art? So bro, really, Alvin know that better. See, bro, this, this, I'm honestly going to say this right. I think one of the biggest traits of leadership is knowing when to defer. Mm. So art is bro lane. Marketing is mine. Mm. So we merging those two worlds and he coming up with creative ways that we could win as well as the people we gifting it to and everybody makes some paper. So I know that was the gist of it, but yeah, bro, correct me if I'm wrong too, bro, but basically we gifted to David, we put it on Grace Assets and then when people purchase it, David gets a percentage every time his picture, a print of his picture is purchased, right? So we gift it to you. Okay. When we put it on the website, mm-hmm. people buy it. You, you, it's on your page. The link is on your page. Mm-hmm. And it will go to our page, thegraceassets.com. And then when they buy it, you get 20 to 30% of the net profit. Mm-hmm. It just goes to you every month. And then you will have the coloring book, which you will be in as well. You just send us a brief bio and you'll get royalties from that. And also when we created an NFT, as you know how NFTs works, every time someone resells the actual NFT, you'll get a percentage of that. So all you have to do is just keep being great and it's going to appreciate with time. That art piece alone is valued higher now because it was presented on EYL. But as time grows, it appreciates. Uh, as your name gets bigger, it appreciates. As Derek's name gets bigger, it appreciates. As my name as an artist um, gets bigger, it all appreciates. So down the line, 10 years from now, um, if you decide to gift it to a gallery or a friend or a family member, when you gift it under your business, it's a tax deductible for you. Since um, I think the law is you can't gift over 15000 in cash, but when it comes to something tangible, there's no value. You just take it to an appraiser and you can say it's worth $5,000. You gifted it, that's a tax deductible, $5,000 off of your social pool gotcha. pocket. So, yeah. So here's, here's typically, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Here's typically how a business works. Mm-hmm. You're like, ask me. You know what I mean? Like, yo, if this is what you want to do? <laughs> it was like, no, this, uh, here's this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, no, bro. It's 100% I like optional. The, I know. No, 100% but optional. no, no. I, I kind of like the fact that you just assume because it's a good idea. <laughs> and <laughs> everybody had our, like, ass cast had they joint. I'm like, yo, y'all ran the play. That joint <laughs> was crazy. Bro. Thank you. That was the goal. I like how you moved. <laughs> Nobody asked me though. It's Appreciate like this is what happens. All right, so but you got you got to take me back to man um, before Derek Grace too. You always been Derek Grace too, but mm-hmm. before the tattoos, mm-hmm. before business entrepreneurship, what was going on? Take me back like twelve thirteen. Uh, that's a good one. Twelve thirteen. So bro, I was always business minded. Uh, for a couple of reasons, not obvious ones. Like, oh, I want to grow up and be an entrepreneur. More so, I never liked authority. And my daddy taught me a lot about finances. So I began to realize, like, in this world that we live in, the more finances you have, the more authority you either have or that you can purchase or use as a resource. So early on, I wanted, like, a lot out of life because he exposed, like, he, he was taking me out of the country. Yeah, first time I've been in the country was 12 or 13 of the summer. Mm. So he had been taking me out of the country, just exposing me to different things. So I always wanted more. But when I saw like, um, it's actually like the resources and the power you can get with the dollar, it made, it just, the, the two just perfectly intertwined. And I wanted to get a lot of money and I wanted to do it independently. And again, not because I, I, I didn't even know there were entrepreneurship as a child. I just knew I didn't like listening to people. So early on, um, what I did, 
job wise. I know I know my first job was working at a skating ring. I worked at Steak and Shake. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get the visual. <laughs> no, bro, it was terrible, right? Because I worked overnight. <laughs> me and my me and my best friend at that time. We was the only people there. So like, this ain't nothing proud of, but like, we used to take orders. So look, we would take a big order, but charge them for like a sauce and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so we would keep their paper and then put it in the register. Like it used to make oh, sense until we got up. yeah, until we got caught. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got caught. I ain't get caught, but. They got rid of both of us. But yeah, bro, that second shake. I worked for uh, Sirius Radio, like cold calling people like, hey, would you like to get a really? serious subscription? Yeah. Um, I went to college and got three credits and was like, nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what other job I had? Skating ring, steak and shake, serious. Oh, and I used to work at the sheriff's office uh, during the summer. Cause my pops um, in law enforcement. So he got me a job there early on. They paid us really well to be kids. So I how, how old was, was this? I had to be like 13, 14, making like $2,000 a month. Really? Yeah. Oh, you was yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, no. They, they paid us some bread. They paid us good. And yeah. then I ended up, I was a 911 dispatcher from 18 to 22. And that was the last job I ever had. Really? Yeah. What's that, when was the first face tag? How old? 22, when I left that job. Like right after that? Right after that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, literally, I was, I was going out of there for like three days and I went and got my face tatted. Yo, so you was there four years answering like uh, like call center nine one one. What is your emergency? Yeah. What else was you doing during that time frame though? Uh, so bro, one thing I forgot to mention in high school, we wanted to open a club, uh, a strip club, and a tattoo shop. Mm. Like we was at, we was in eleventh grade, like trying to figure out how we can get a brick brick and mortar business. <laughs> it seems like watching your stories, you about the older strip club for sure. Like, <laughs> it seems like that's no, the right, next me, play. me and the wife definitely done talked about it multiple times. We just saying, we just saying, went forward with it yet. But um, so bro, at that point, I didn't have. Oh no, I worked at Win Dixie. I forgot a job. Mm-hmm. I worked. I was. I worked on the stock career Win Dixie. But during that period, it's like 12, 12, 11, 12 grade. Um, me and my cousin and my god brother, we went and invested in some illegal things. Mm-hmm. Like, my brother got 15 years. He's still in prison. But really? I, yeah. Uh, still, he get out and like, what well, should be getting out soon? I don't know the exact date. But anyhow. Was you with him? Like, you were you were with him? No, we funded it, though. Mm. So, so basically, like, my brother called a charge. He was in a, a drug treatment, a drug treatment program. So he got this amazing idea, like, hmm, I'm in a drug program. I should just sell drugs to the people who trying to get <laughs> Get out of the drill program. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yo, he's so, a savage, bro. <laughs> so, bro, I'm in like 12th grade. My brother, oh, he's four years old. He's he like, bro, I got this play. Like, we going to make this amount of money. You can get the club in a tattoo shop. I'm like, oh, say less. Let's do it. So, anyway. Just selling that, drugs that to the people trying to get out of the drug program. Yeah, that was one of my, that was my, you know what, bro? That was my earliest, like, real investment in life. And I was in 11th grade, and we gave him the money for that. It worked for a little bit, but clearly it didn't because he got 15 years shortly after that. But about 15 yeah. years for well, what was it? Oh, trafficking, all type of stuff, bro. He had already, he had already. My brother had already been to prison one time, but because of who my pops was, they just like gave him a slap on the wrist. Like he literally went to the processing center. He didn't even go to a real camp. They just sent him back based on like my pops being able to make some stuff move around. But that mm-hmm. second go around, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't hearing it, <sighs> and they like. So what they could do too is they could b- basically bring up your point sheet over your whole criminal career and then max you out. Mm. His original sentence was 60 years and it went to like 42, <sighs> 25, and then it finally went down to 15. And it's been at 15 for like 11 years. So I'm sure 15 is what it's going to be. I bet he's pretty proud of you though. Oh yeah, yeah, nah, he love it. Yeah. He love it. Yeah, yeah. I bet you make sure he's straight in there. Yeah, yeah, nah, he good to go. Was you he ever good. in the streets too? Um, like you yourself? So, bro, the only time, I'm going to say this, the only time I went outside is when, like, people made me come outside. Other than that, I'm quiet. I be chilling. I mind my business. But I had a shooting in 2015. Uh, They did the whole first 48 interrogation thing, but nothing came over. It was clear to self-defense. So, What you mean, first 48? 
You know, in first grade, they take you in the interrogation show, room yeah. and like give you food and all that. They was nice. They took me in and gave me stuff. But they gave you food. I ain't have nothing to tell. Just like, yeah, I shot him. Okay. It happened. Blah blah. blah <laughs> and I was it. I'm glad they recorded though, because normally when the first get food, they told. So <laughs> you see, Derek was like Popeyes or something like that. Like, dang, you see? Nah, no, no, bro. They just giving me drinks. He offered me a cigarette. I was like, I don't smoke, bro. And I just like, <laughs> I take a sprite though. I took the sprite. We had a conversation. So what was, happened in that? What like? Are you able to kind of talk yeah, about? Yeah, you. you it wasn't your fault. Um. Um, in short, bro, I was going to get one of the mothers of my children. She wasn't the mother of my children at that time. Um, her her mom and I had a disagreement, and her brother, her overheard the disagreement, so he came outside. Um, I had my daughter with me, I had Derek with me, and he went to open my car door. So as I get prepared to shoot him, his mom ran around because she saw the gun before he did and jumped in the way, and they both end up getting shot. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, but they all right. They survived? Yeah, they all right, yeah. Did they try to, like, how, how does that work? Like, do they try to, like, sue you, or once no, that happens? more than anything, somehow? she was trying to, uh, she felt like it was clear self-defense because who my daddy and my family is in mm-hmm. law enforcement, but, you know, in America, you literally can't, like, open people's car doors right, right. and attempt to touch them. For you sure. can get killed for that. But uh, but no, that was all that came of it. Um, What'd you learn from that scenario? Um, <laughs> my first answer wasn't a good one. I learned. Uh, <laughs> give me the first one, and then you can give me a better one. Bro, the first one was kind of bad. Like I I know when when the mother of my child see this, she'll be upset if she heard my first answer. So I'm gonna say that one. Okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, second answer. What did I learn? So I think in every every situation, right? I mean... Oh, I learned the importance of um, nepotism. I learned the importance of... What does nepotism mean? Joe, Joe doesn't know what that means. You know, just so. give, you. giving your friends and family a job. Just making sure that certain uh, parameters are put in place that their life on the work, work, on the work side is not as hard as everybody else that got to get a job there. But uh, yeah, bro, that was the How biggest How does that lesson. situation teach you nepotism? Because they treated me like they was arresting a king when they got there, based on who he is. Mm. So like my experience, like initially when they got there, right, they draw their guns. Uh, they had me walk. Like he literally timed it. He was like, take seventeen steps backwards. And literally, right, the seventeen step, I was like, he just knew perfectly, right. So I take my step backwards. I get there. They give me like the most inappropriate pat down ever. <laughs> and they was they was mean at first, right? They cuffed me, put me in the car, mm-hmm. and my pops get there. And he literally came to the car like the deputies. I could see him screaming on the other side of the window at me, but I can't hear him. Mm, he, get the, yeah. he get the door open. He like, why wouldn't you tell me who you were? And I'm confused. I'm like, what? And he was like, why you didn't tell me who you were? And I was like, I'm the one called y'all. I gave you my name. <laughs> and he was like, um, man, I used to be your little league football coach. And I'm looking, I'm like, well, Brian, I just shot somebody. I don't remember little league. Like, <laughs> this ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But, bro, he opened the door. He was like, you're not a criminal, man. Why you tell me you are? He take my cuffs off. They went and got me a, a squad car that had, like, an extended back. Like, basically not a small back so I could be comfortable. And then even when he, when the new deputy get there with the new car, he like, look, um, he like, what you like to listen to? Only thing I got on my, iP- my iPod. What? What you in the yeah. mob, bro? Yeah, bro. He's like, what you like? He's like, only thing I got on my iPod is Meek Mill or Eminem. And I was like, and my mom around just like, Cause bro, shooting somebody is a traumatic experience. Yeah. I ain't thinking about Meek Mill or <laughs> but I just like put on Meek Mill. So my car also, bro, my license was suspended when this happened, and my tag was bad. And he comes to the window. He like, hey, call somebody, tell them to come down this back street, get your car out of here. He was like, the media gonna be here soon, and I don't need anybody, you know, seeing nothing that they don't need to see. Or da 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 da. Why are they treating you like this? My pops retired Secret Service. My great granddaddy retired from both Tampa Police Department and the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. And I got a bunch of other relatives, but like my great granddad laid a lot of groundwork. He was one of the first black officers in Tampa. Mm. So in that city on both sides, we have a lot of favor based off stuff that he did like 50, 60 years ago. Do you ever think about like what that created for you in your life and you doing that for your kids? Absolutely, bro. That's why I like That's me and my lady talk about it all the time, like. If one of our children not directly in law enforcement, we gonna have somebody like a good friend directly in law enforcement because 
I know for facts from experience how you get handled when you know the right people. Yeah, yeah. that's a fact. That's a fact. All right, I want to I get into like the business side of your business, mm-hmm. right? I need to know the breakdown of this $11 million. I got you. What did you do before 2020? Money-wise, all right, 2019. Well, what were you selling? Uh, similar format, books, curriculums, board games. Okay. But, um, so 2018 was $1.4 million. We had a beautiful jump. 2020 mm-hmm. was a different monster. Right. $1.4 million, two point, I mean, 2019 was like 2.1, I believe. And then 2020 is when we hit for right up under 11 million. But bro, the biggest thing, I just continuously was watching how Trump could get the whole world in a frenzy, especially the internet, yeah. when this man would tweet. And I remember, like, me and Gabe would be talking, he'd be like, bro, they finna charge this amount of money for your shipping. Trump just tweeted some BS, and now the Chinese going crazy. Sheesh. Da, da, da. And I'm like, damn. I'm like, so I'm sitting back, I'm like, hmm, this bro, election year. So he finna be on TV nonstop on the mm-hmm. internet. Um, if he lose, it's still his last year. So I know he going out wild. Right. He wilding every day anyway. And I seen the impact on the internet, bro. And it was January 9th of 20, 2020. And I had this idea. I'm like, mm, I should just repackage my curriculums, but rebrand it with a new title. So we just took the same curriculum that's been out since 2014, 15. Really? Repackaged them. Leveraged it with his name because he was popping already. Called it the post Trump, and it went crazy. And the beauty of it is, it worked three ways, right? So if it's post Trump, this title signifies that this is the information you should invest in after Trump. For sure. So if bro lose, because I, I I start peeping and people come to me and be like, man, that was genius. He's about to lose. You made the post Trump pack. I got mine. Okay, cool. As long as you got it. <laughs> then you had another demographic of people that was like, oh, you're black. I'm black. I hate Trump. I'm buying it. Cool. As long as you bought it. <laughs> and then you had people who rock with him who wanted to buy it just to get my take on him because they were so intrigued and found out, like, I said, bro, name, I think one time in that whole, like, two, three hundred pages. He literally has nothing to do with that pack. It was just the era of Trump because he was our president. I put post-Trump on it. And that energy mixed with the excitement that he would bring just made the numbers go crazy. The same information you were selling 2014, 15. Absolutely. That's why I tell you all the time. I'm like, y'all tripping. Y'all could have bought the curriculum individually four years ago for $20. But now because you waited, you could get them collectively. But now I'm going to hit you for like $800. All right, look, I know you're enjoying the episode, but I got to tell you, finally, you asked for it. And we created a Patreon, okay? We created an inner circle. We have amazing stories, amazing information, the how-tos from the episodes. The only thing we're missing is a community. So it's about that time. We put together our Patreon. We put together our community because we have to have conversation around the information. So even this podcast we're listening to right now, there needs to be conversation. I want to hear what you got. I want to hear what you got. Like, let's throw some stuff back and forth. And because we're like-minded, we're all going in the same direction. When we connect, connect in a community, we can connect on other stuff outside the community because we're building real relationships. Okay. So check out the Patreon. We got three tiers. I don't care what tier you join. Um, the support is, um, the support is appreciated. Okay. Thank you so much. Now back to the episode. Same conversation, just my value as a brand and a businessman with a. So for me to rehab this conversation with you, now I'm finna charge you like 40 times what I would have charged you five years ago. Goodness gracious. He's smart like this all the time, y'all. <laughs> we coming up with this stuff all the time. I didn't even like, it's crazy because I guess foundational information for success is mm-hmm. the same. It hasn't changed. Right. But as entrepreneurs, we always feel like we got to create something new. Mm -hmm. And what you're showing me right now is we don't have to create something new. We just have to brand Mm -hmm. it differently. Absolutely. And bro, the beauty of the beauty. So this is like one thing that I'm proud of with the post-Trump. We took a campaign and we ran a campaign all the way until January of this year. So we we made that thing bubble, sizzle, blow up, re-blow up a hundred times in 14 months. And I remember me and Khadija talking about it. I was like, you know... Like, albums don't even have that type of shelf life. Yeah. After a while, it's gone. But we had the pack, and then we threw more energy into it when we launched the course. And then we price-pointed it to where one was far greater than the other. 
So it almost created this. It basically put it like this. We would tax on the course, but go on the low end on the pack. But I know the consumer really want to be able to see me and learn this hands-on. So for right now, while they ain't got it, they kind of got it. They're going to they gonna settle for the pack, but they're going to double back and get the course because I'll then go market on social media and be like, hey, y'all, tonight in class, I'm covering page 88. And those people that's been in a state of confusion that only could afford the pack, they finna figure out how, to, how they can afford it and get in the course tonight. So we juggle that back and forth. And then too, bro, a bundle. Like one thing I learned with the culture is they love to feel like they're getting something for free. Mm-hmm. So at a certain point, it's just intellectual property. And it's already on paper. It's already a digital file. Like I love email money. So I like, that was another thing too that differentiated the money from last year to this year is I don't do digital products anymore. But last year I was doing digital. And people like, I like email money. No overhead, no shipping. Just sending emails all day for five and $800 transaction. Dang, that's crazy. I'm, I'm trying to think of like, what's some stuff I could sell that I did years ago? Because the, the stuff works. Right. It works. But that's, uh, we're right still in the post-Trump situation and Biden's doing all kind of weird stuff. Mm-hmm. And you could really be running the bag all the way up some more. Yeah, no, like, no, bro. I, we, we definitely 11 could. could have been a light year. Yeah. But no, bro, this is going to be a light year because this is my goal. Network-wise, my goal is for the network to be making $14 million a month by December. How? A uh, million subscribers. Okay. And at my subscription rate from, even like when you say that, when you say this, he's like, bro, why would you walk away from a situation that's net in 11 and you got faith that this other one's just going? Because, bro, even like- I'm just saying, more. most people like, they'll stop when things slow down. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, if, if this whole podcast thing don't work out, and I see the numbers start dipping. That's when I go into, you know what? I ain't doing podcasts no right, more. Right, right. I'm doing something else. Because this thing's not working. Right. You feel me? I just, I really do love your focus, man. Because I, I definitely want to get into how you're going to build out this network. Because that's interesting. It, right? Yeah. So give me the idea. All right. So I'm guessing Netflix gave a good concept. No, nah, bro. What Netflix? No? It's funny, right? As we, I want to make sure my chain ain't hitting the mic. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, here you go. Yeah. So, bro, the, mics. the funny thing is, um, as we having this interview, um, my assistant hit me and was like, Discovery Channel want to have... She, like, literally just texted me and was like, send me the screenshot of Discovery Channel trying to figure out what it, what DGTV is. So, I'm going to tell you where it started. It started with Discovery Channel. They reached out a long time ago and was like, they want to do a three... Like, a three-show deal. A, a business show a couple's counseling show and like a with me and Chelsea and then man, what was the other one? I can't remember the third concept. So I was four. I'm like, cool. Okay, this TV, this sounds good. This sounds promising. We have like five meetings at this point. The last meeting was like May 29th in Puerto Rico. And I'm trying to enjoy myself in Puerto Rico. So I was definitely annoyed. Like, damn, I got to stop having fun and talk to y'all again. We ain't getting no business done. Y'all just keep wanting to talk. <laughs> We didn't give them access to the course because they like, well, we want to study, blah, blah, cool. We didn't give them access to courses, books, board games, everything. So it's May 29th. We had this hour and a half conversation. And I'm like, all right, cool. They, they sounded promising again. Nothing happened. So fast forward, I'm in Las Vegas. I've, I've had some medicine. I'm feeling good. And I go to Raising <laughs> Cane's. And I'm in Raising Cane's ordering my food. And I see that their CEO has like a placard on the wall and it's like, be sure to tune in to Discovery Channel. He got a new show called like Restaurant Revitalization, something like that, right? So I see bro name and I'm like, how much he worth? So I go Google him. I could have swore he said like he worth like 5.6 billion. And I remember seeing Chelsea and other people. And I'm like, imagine having, having a worth of 5.6 billion and rather than build your own platform and leverage your stuff independently, you go sign a deal to Discovery Channel. I remember like, and salute to, I can't even remember bro name, salute to him. I ain't hating like, he, he doing, he a big dog for sure. But just in that moment, I'm like, I couldn't imagine leveraging my likeness to another platform and I'm a billion dollar giant myself. Like mm. we just would have built it in-house. So I remember like laughing like, yeah, he wilding and blew it off. And then after that, um, I get home two days later, bro. And I, I don't know if I hit Khadija while I was in Vegas or the two days later, but I'm my, sitting with my medicine again. I was like, you know what? We done with Discovery. We 
we just going to code our own whole network and do it ourselves. I hit her. She hit her cousin out in growing China or Japan because he do all our mm. code and stuff. And I was just like, bro, do you think you could pull this off by my birthday, August 20th? Bro, this is last month in July. He literally had like 36 days and he was like, if we get started today, I'm confident I can make this happen. I was like, cool, press the button. Boom, press the button. Literally sent the wire that night so we can get started. And we've been running ever since. So yeah, bro, the goal is to step into that same space that Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, uh, all of them are in. And basically rob them, bro. I know like Netflix, Netflix, Disney, and Amazon all roughly got 200 million subscribers. Mm. I'm looking at the game like, if I can get... That ain't even 1% of that, but if I can get like a point percent of that, which is 1 million people to commit in a year, now we talking about a network that's going to have like a $200 million valuation after the next year based on if we just stay stagnant at that million, that million person, uh, that million person subscription point. And then outside of that, bro, if I'm basing off the history of my last couple of subscriptions we did, they were all much higher than the $13 rate that we charging out with way less value. And so the beauty of having a network is not only can we still educate them, but we can give them comedy. We can give them drama. We can give them docu-series. We can give them, my, like, people are super intrigued with my real life because I do post about real things I do, but they never get to see it. They just see the still post and be like, dang, they be having fun. So with the reality show, they'll literally be able to get to see how much fun we have with no censorship, no blanket. No, you can't say that. You can't show this, like, whether we want to go... Church, a full nude. We got we got free reign. So, bro, we everything independent from having to purchase bandwidth to run it, to the coding, to original content, everything in-house from the camera crews to the lights to, like, people who've been grinding with me, helping me make the other businesses, million-dollar businesses, are the people who stepped up and was like, so cool, I'm going to still help you get a million on the other stuff, but I'm going to get in front of the camera for the network, and we're just going to bring it full circle. So, like, you're talking about, like, every aspect of your life. Like, like when you and your wife go out fishing. Yeah, no, nah, bro. I, 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 I <laughs> def- you see it. Nah, bro. So, and, bro, that's the funniest the, thing, That's bro. the beauty of having it independent because I just get to be myself. Mm-hmm. I really can't. I could be myself on the internet, but I'm going to get flagged all day. But on here, there's no shadow banning. There's no you can't say that. That's going to offend this community. There's mm-hmm. no cancel. We just get to genuinely be ourselves. So, no, nah, they in for some interesting stuff. Sign up. Do y'all really be going fishing or is it like just... Um, no, nah, bro. We, the closest we got to fishing is like jumping in the ocean. But we no, haven't no, no, necessarily... No, 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 I'm talking about when you be posted like, yo, we, we going to look for something. Oh, no, bro. That's a... Re- that's, oh, that's, see that? <laughs> that's real life. It's like every two days, you're like, yo, we going to the club. We about to, we looking for something. What's that process like? I mean, I... Um, how does that work? So, bro, really... We DM, okay, so we DM women back and forth to each other all day. And then basically, I just be like, what you think? She'll be like, what I think? And then from there, we come to an agreement. I'm, I'm the shy one, so like I'm laid back. But we'll come to an agreement, and she's like aggressive with the things that she wants, her approach. So she diving straight into the DM or the phone or the comments like, hey, we think da 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 da. And then from there, they either it's either yay or nay. They sign their NDA, and it's party time. NDA. Yeah. Gotta have an NDA. Yeah, no, I don't need them going. I don't need them writing no tell all voice. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. bro, we, bro, we have we have a lot of that's why I say yeah, and network I, I do enjoy the network idea because people are gonna get to see a part of me they never got all they get to see of me is like teach or buy or dad. Mm. And I keep it that way intentionally, but with the network, they'll be able to I don't know. I think people underestimate like people people be saying like Bro, I don't see how you deal with the trolls and how you just keep your cool. And I'm like, bro, if you knew my real life, you would know, like, I don't have the energy to muster up negativity because my life be so turned up in, like, the most amazing <laughs> way. Like, if you woke up how I woke up, man, you're not beefing with nobody on the internet. You can <laughs> laugh, toss that phone, and get back to whatever you're doing to start your day. Yeah. But yeah, bro, from... We got the... Fam- so, debut, we got the family show, Grace mm. Licks, the most dangerous family on the planet. Uh... We got a fitness love in show with a mix of comedy. Um, Are they all you, you or you're just kind of like putting oh, people? Oh, no, no, bro. So I don't want to oversaturate myself on the network at right. all. So I'm sticking to like one or two things and I'm out of the way. Everybody else is doing their thing. Right. But um, 
we got the beef hotline where it's going to be a, it's a play on words because it's a vegan chef along with my partner and they cook vegan meals, which is non-beef, but they intercept and receive calls from different parties who are beefing. And we basically bring them on while simultaneously making a non-meat meal and help them iron out their beef and their differences on the show. Mm. Um, that's that's dope. Yeah, no, bro, we have a lot that's of fun. Dope. We got we got an uh, interview show called Amnesty with some of some dope and controversial individuals get to express themselves and and we 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 throw a little obstacle course in there while they're eating and whatnot. Uh, I mean, while they're interviewing via their food, so we basically put people in. We interview them, but we hit them with some type of shock that's far left field. Like, you'll see an interview with 19 Keys soon. That's going to be real interesting because this is not a space that anybody ever seen mm. Keys in. But um, I'm trying to think of what else on Give the Give me an example of, like, you throw something in far left. What you mean? So, Keys, Keys was in the middle of his interview. And we had some very, very beautiful, energetic young ladies mm. that took removed their clothes. And they came in while he was interviewing and they danced with him and just, you know, it was some nice theatrics while he was talking about. <laughs> yeah, because like, that, because Keith is like a serious person. He's like, like a stand-up dude. He's going to sit there and be focused. You feel me? Right. <laughs> yeah, no, bro, we have a ball. Um, y'all, am I missing any oh, debut shout shows? Out to we got Gods Amongst Men. That's going to be a dope one because it's men only for this specific channel. So it's a place where, like, it's, kind of, it's gonna give you that little rascal's energy where like where the fellas really get to kick it, no women allowed, and we just get to let our hair down, be ourselves, but really like build and uh, it's gonna be therapeutic, but it's gonna be like barbershop talk at the same time. Mm. But the beauty is just no women allowed. So you ain't gotta get judged or get cursed out later yeah. for your thoughts and your opinions. Chelsea has the opposite with the safe haven where the ladies do the same exact thing. And am I missing anything else on the debut, y'all? Any other shows you rolling out with that I didn't mention? I know it's six. Oh, Derek has his own gun show that's coming out. Hmm. Um, How old is Derek? He just turned 13, day before yesterday. It's Derek Grace 3, right? Yeah, he's the okay. third. So yeah, bro, we, we we got a lot in the oven too. But the debut, we got like six or seven shows rolling out for the debut. So walk me through the business model, okay? So let's say Joe has a show where... Um, He's cooking topless. You know what I mean? Because Joe Biden, he be, he be into that kind of stuff. He's going to do a show. <laughs> he's cooking, like, seafood topless. I don't know why that's the thing. Mm-hmm. But he he records it himself, right? Mm-hmm. Submits it to you. Mm-hmm. How much does he make from that? Gotcha. So I'm glad you asked that, bro. So we'll have a section for that also where people that want to submit pilots or feel like they mm-hmm. have a good fit for the network ideas, whatever, concepts, they'll be able to submit that. We'll review it and go from there. But basically, so we would, we would, of course, have to pull Joe's statistics to see what type of numbers he make moving on his own, his following, traction, all that good stuff. And then from there, we will make Joe an offer. Because we've signed multiple people so far. We just staying quiet until September 1st with who we officially signed. But we would basically meet Joe with a number that fits our budget, that could fit him as well. And then from there for his viewership, so like they get, they get signing bonuses also. They give viewership bonuses. So if Joe out, after he shoot his show and it's on the network, he going hard on social media, running his numbers up, and his show is performing well, then Joe get Joe continuously gets more paper because, I mean, he clearly putting in more work. Mm-hmm. He bringing in the numbers, so. But is there a particular formula that, that everybody's going to follow knowing, going in? Like, I know if I get X amount of views or downloads, I can equate this to this number. Yeah, no, we do have an actual formula. I don't know the specific number. That's Dominique who be mm. all in the email. Gotcha. Not. But Dominique handled that part. But no, they, they do have a specific formula. I'm just not savvy on what it is from A to Z. Gotcha. But I do know signing bonuses are there. Um, and I also know based on your viewership, you get paid more and more outside of what you're getting already on salary. Mm. And you said it's $13 a month? Yeah, $12.99. $12.99 a month. Mm-hmm. Yo, I want to start a network, man. No, bro, you should. I mean, bro, you 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 running the pad the the pad the podcast industry, bro. You definitely could create a conglomerate of. You know, I was thinking. I was thinking, like, definitely going to start a podcasting network. Mm-hmm. But I'm starting to see what you're saying, where people don't mind subscribing as long as you continue to deliver content, right. and then the people, like when Joe has his 
his topless cooking show, mm-hmm. he's going to promote it. Right. And they're going to come on driving people to the subscription. Exactly. That's lit, bro. Yeah, bro. So that's the beauty of it is basically creating like a force field with the budget to where we can encompass this type of talent, but getting the right talent because we know that talent plus my marketing uh, expertise is going to take us to a level where it makes sense. So like my payroll done ballooned from my payroll initially with the video game and payroll is like 115000 a month. Well, that's not including security. Mm. But payroll just for the business side has ballooned like another sixty, seventy thousand dollars a month. But it's well worth it because based off the formula that I created for the subscription program, like, yeah, bro, we'll I'll be we'll, we'll be able to accumulate that type of we'll generate that type of revenue just to cover payroll in like probably like the first three, four days of the month and, mm. and the other twenty. That's how I would do it now with business, except it was retail. So a payroll, a payroll like one hundred and twenty a month. I know out the month, I probably should hit them. Like, I like the average 30 a day. So we talking from the first to the fourth day of the month, payroll out the way. The other 26 days of the month is going to be fun or investing. And I'm, I'm going to run the same type of system with the uh, with, uh, with DGTV because we're doing away with Shopify now at this point. There'll be no retail. Gotcha. So, bro, they, it is a big risk. And I, I totally felt what you were saying yesterday because I'm essentially walking away and shutting down a multi-million dollar machine and I'm finna be like, all right, well, you a zero dollar machine, but I'm gonna make you multi million in a month's time. But that is the goal, though. I'm I'm guaranteeing I'm gonna get DGTV out a million dollar uh, business in thirty days. That's my goal. And that you know, really this this whole play that you're doing right now, the more I get to know you, falls mm-hmm. in line with your character and who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, it's almost like I feel like you enjoy the thrill. Like right. if you didn't, it seems like if you didn't make so much money last year, you'd probably still be doing the same thing. But now you went so high, you're like, hold on, I got to do this again. This- no, bro, and that's the thing. Like, I t- I've had a conversation with my lady is I'm thrill-driven. I don't function very well without adversity. Like, I need... There has to be some type of life-defying goal at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to be like, Man, I'm not running down now. I don't feel like running down. I'm going to mm. just sit here. So for me, bro, I really do work that way. Like, I know it was two different occasions last year. I bought million dollar homes. Uh, my home was like 1.2. I bought that in one day, and my mother home was 800. I bought that in one day. I had to spend that at one moment. But for me, I was a little sad having to spend that much. But it was like hella motivation because seeing my account drop like that and being like, "All right, now we got something to work for." But I'm one of the people, bro. When it's too cool, it's too easy. I get complacent and I don't perform at my best because. There's nothing to perform for. Like, everything is just working. It's too easy right now. Give me your keys to success, man. What are, like, the, the philosophies that you live by that if somebody takes these, mm-hmm. they can go win, period? All right, number one would be uh, self-love, bro. That's the And I know that word sounds cliche because everybody using it so much, y'all. But listen, when y'all learn to really just, like, answer to self and seek co-signs and, and the green light from self, that's going to free you up from so much. Bro, I think that's one of the biggest things that separate me from most people is like, yeah. I just don't care. I genuinely don't care about anybody negative opinion. And I kind of care about their positive opinion. I don't even care about that one that much. So <laughs> with that being said, my only, my only reliance for like, you know, uh, empowerment is myself because I'm not looking for it from anywhere else. I know that I'm enough. I know I'm more than enough. And I know, like, I'm already that dude. We just waiting on the rest of the world to see it. But I was born him. It's just up to them to see it. And if they don't see it, the same way with me pulling the products back, like, if you ain't buy it, that's your fault. Mm-hmm. I, know the, I know the space that I occupy, you know, in the 2020s. But it'd be self-love, bro, self-awareness. I feel like if you don't know who or what you're shooting at, then why you shooting? And that's why I think that, that's a state I think a lot of people are in right now is they know where they want to go. Or they, they want more, but they don't know how to get there what they're truly trying to obtain, or even a level of happiness. Like, it's a gang of people right now that couldn't tell you, like, what makes you happy. They would have absolutely no answer for you. Mm-hmm. So imagine, like, you not knowing what makes you happy, but wanting to be great in life. Like, bro, you ain't even figured out you yet, let alone the business side of you. So self-love, self-awareness, self-education is a must. I feel like your oppressor is never going to educate you to a level to actually overthrow them. So why would you give them the occupancy of your full mind? You know I mean? I might listen to you a little bit. I might... 
receive a little bit of what you're saying. But for the most part, I'm running with my gut, my thought process, and um, self-preservation, bro. Whether it be physically, financially, or mentally, like we live in a we live in a competitive world with a competitive nature. So if you're not really focused on how you can be the smartest, then you probably gonna get lost in the sauce out here. If you're not focused on how you could be the most dangerous, you may run into some physical adversity one day that you know take you out, take you out of here in your 20s. So for me, real self self preservation is key, and I tell everybody, um, not more so key. Well, no, these part of the keys to success, but my motto, whether it be the work, entrepreneurship, the other side of the fence, infiltrate, educate, and vacate. Nothing is new under the sun. So identify the things and the people who are doing things that you can't or are unable to do. Hold and on, just real study quick. Them. Educate. Infiltrate, educate, and vacate. Infiltrate, educate, and vacate. Right. Okay, break that down. I'm sorry. So I, for I me, bro, if I had to infiltrate and educate and vacate right now, it would be... So I want to buy a jet because we fly on jets all the time and I, I think it's just way too expensive. So I eventually want to own one. And him 500 inspired me, inspired me too, just seeing bro do his thing. So with that being said... If I'm infiltrating, I'm going to start to mingle around people who are in the aviation world because I'm trying to get game. I'm trying to figure out price points. I'm trying to figure out who to plug on the gas, who, who to plug on parts, this and that and the third. Educate is me getting in the rooms with these individuals and soaking up all the intellectual property I can. Vacating is me then taking my experiences, my wit, my knowledge, all that game I, I, I ear hustled and got. And my bag, investing in it and building an aviation center next door to door, next door to theirs. And now we actively competing. And I know y'all ain't going to outwork me, out-internet me, or out-market me. So that's how right now I would infiltrate, educate, and vacate. And people who got jobs, I tell everybody, get jobs for information and not money. So the money is the plus. But the game you're going to take from the job is the real gift. So if you want to teach financial literacy, go get a job at a bank, H&R Block, Amscot. Get yourself around people who moving and grooving, moving money 24 hours a day. And... You know, the same play. Get all the OT you can. Get all the time and a half. You take your bag and your intellectual property, you build your own situation, and now y'all competing. Dang. I do got to ask you this, too, because this is your last month of teaching, mm -hmm. right? Got two days. Two days. And I see <laughs> your... Um, I really want to know how many times you made $5 and you made $1.99. All right, bro. I don't know now, I need some of the numbers, But I'm going to tell bro. you day one. Or I want to say we had 30,000 orders, 40,000, somewhere in there. I know day one, we sm we smacked them for like 100. I can't remember what it was, bro. It was 100. Five dollars at a time. Yeah, bro. And I've never had that type of price point. So people really, like, look. Did you? So we got one going right now. Because the so, price is $2 now, right? Yeah. $1.99? And this uh, is how many done came through since me and you sitting here talking. We only at 13 minutes right now. God, all day long. Yeah, that's that's over 100 since me and you been having this conversation. I don't care, bro. You missed you missed that money a little bit. <laughs> you missed them little them little dings all day, bro. I know, no, I know it. No, bro. Look, so look, I do. I will say that, bro, because I had this conversation with my lady. That Shopify ding psychologically. <laughs> anybody that got it know it. Like it's motivating. Yeah. Or like it just it just make you check your phone like oh another one another right. one another one, so I do genuinely like physically I miss that ding because that ding is like a sign of success almost it's like mm. you're getting closer you're getting closer right. you're getting closer <laughs> I do miss that but no bro, I I I will miss it but you'll recreate it yeah, yeah we'll you'll probably back. create another little ding for like when people sign up for DGTV so yeah we're gonna figure something out because I that, that mo it's motivation for real yeah how much it costs to build out this network. Um, bro, I know right now on the coding, I think we between twenty five and thirty five thousand just on the coding. Mm -hmm. If we talking, oh, building out the network, payroll, uh, sets, cameras. Okay, Russ, I know easily. Hey, I could just pull it up. We can get an accurate number. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, bro. August is my birthday month, but what? I was like, I need a gift. All this money I had to spend. <laughs> I need a gift. He did this all in a couple months, though, right? Yeah, bro. We we had we we generated the idea to go independent last month, and 
shout out to the team. Shout out to Ash, Khadija, Liz, everybody, because they got active and pulled it off. And when did you s- decide to stop teaching? Uh, the top, like literally, it was like two days left in July, and I told DJ, I was like, "Look, take all the products down. I'm done with it." And at the end of August, August my last month, and we gone. So yeah, bro, total spending. I have a bag. God, yeah, total total man. spending for August was five hundred seventy two thousand hundred and twenty dollars. I will say only from pro- August to September, August yeah. to almost September. But honestly, though, only uh, only three hundred and some change went towards like actual network stuff, payroll, sets, Airbnbs, jets, uh, signing people. Well, no, not yet. Sign. I do got a signing bonus. I got to pay out to somebody tomorrow, and all. So that number gonna go up. But yeah. what's your signing bonus right now? I know one of them. One person. He's about to get a twenty five thousand dollars signing bonus. Mm. Now he a monster though. I can't wait to say his name. I know everybody be like, "Wow, that's a match made in heaven." <laughs> Pull up the Instagram. Just oh, show me. Yeah, I ain't gonna say it on the camera. <laughs> I can't wait. My, my, my curiosity would not leave the question sitting right there. It's gonna but, be made. It's gonna be a major one, bro. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, that's a match. Yeah. Yeah, we gonna have some fun. Okay, I couldn't think of nobody better. Ah, <laughs> y'all want to know, don't you? Yes, you do. I know. I know. <laughs> Yo, you when you were started talking about um like self-love, a lot of people talk about it, but they don't necessarily practice it because right. I think self-love always requires some sort of sacrifice, right? Mm-hmm. So I can be building my business, I can go get this money, or I can practice self-love. I can some days I don't want to get up, bro. Yeah, I'm with you. I have sir, I have a business where um I mean, I don't always, I don't always, no, I do love podcasting, but I don't want to do it every day. Right, right. But would I give up, like, the income that I make from it? I'm not too sure, which kind of begs the question, how much do I love myself? So let me answer that question, bro, in a better way, right? I was riding last year in 2020, and I remember looking up, look it up again. I Googled, and I was like, the fine told Google define the word well. It simply said, because I thought about this too, bro, after you mentioned that yesterday, I was like, I didn't get that. Wealth is an abundance of valuable possessions or money. The state of being rich, material, material prosperity, plentiful supplies of a particular resource. So with that being said, I was riding, yes, uh, not yesterday, last year. I remember Googling that and I'm like, we in the car and I just had an opinion. I'm like, babe, you know, we consider wealthy. And she was like, we are? And I was like, yeah, by definition, we wealthy. Mm-hmm. So, like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, like, my mind was blown. I know it's a simple conversation. My mind was so blown. Like, damn, I'm actually wealthy. I'm in the wealthy category. But anyway, bro, the reason why it is easier to walk away from that machine, even though it's pumping a lot, is because I made some really smart investments last year that put us in a place where I'm going to say this, bro. If I if I got into a financial turmoil, it would have to be me just being like reckless on a on a scary, scary level because and not saying it's from a, brag- a braggadocious standpoint, but it's almost hard for my family to like financially go broke at this point because like last year alone, I spent like $6 million on real estate. Mm. So the real estate portfolio at this point is like close. It got to be close to $7 million because I had like small houses. But last year I started buying like million dollar homes. Mm. Um, outside of that, the gold got an evaluation of one. Like last I checked, 1.5. But I heard it's somewhere around 1.8 now. The gun collection in itself. You got an evaluation of gold of 1.5, 1.8 million. Yeah. I know last time I physically checked, it was 1.2 and some change. And then my man told me it should be at 1.5 now. But I ain't looked myself in a minute. Is it just jewelry or you got like gold bars at the crib? No, nah, bro, just jewelry. So like not including this, this this stuff with the glittery stuff in it, but just like plain Jane Rollies, uh, and gold weight. We had almost 60, like 62 or 64 pounds with every piece combined. Mm. Uh, and all, that ain't even counting the rollies, just the gold. Because last time I did an appraisal, I just took him straight Cubans. No, no, uh, no rollies. But anyway, mm. bro, between the guns, the gold. In the real estate, um, if we if we went broke, bro, or it was like financial stress, 
it would have to be because I just did something like ridiculously stupid, like bought five Maybacks and just, <laughs> yeah, I'm just out here wild and I bought five Maybacks. We buying all the diamonds in the world, just reckless stuff. So that is one reason, right? To be real with you, my expenses, not including payroll, but my expenses per month, my bills is like $5,000 because like, I don't like buying things if I can't own it. Mm. So the fact that when I had my oh, highest, when I had my highest peak in business, I did like, and I start understanding how people be having the bag and they go broke later because there's no ownership. They'll go, they'll go get this inflated overhead lifestyle of like, all right, I got to pay for my Lambo today, Rolls Royce today, other six houses. When I had a bag, we went big, but it was all asset based. Mm-hmm. So now, right now, if I want to play with the equity in my real estate, we talking 80% of $7 million. That's a lot of equity for somebody who only got $5,000 in bills. And another thing I do, bro, like, I'm not so being... Look, I'm sorry, real quick. When you bought the $6 million worth of real estate, you just bought it right out. We cash out on everything. So the way I structure my real estate deals, too, so nobody get it twisted. I got $6 million in real estate, but I've only spent a million dollars in one setting twice in my life. But the way we do, bro, is my realtor basically will find a property. We hit them and go, Mr. Grace want to put $300,000 down. He'll give you three hundred dollars cash today if you're willing to have an open contract for 60 days. So I'll drop 300 cash today, get that motivation because my back against the wall, hit the internet, turn up, make an M in a month, and when the 30 days up, we'll pay the other 700 cash out, done deal. Mm. And it was like, so we we basically like, I'm going to throw you a half of me and just hold, hold that for me. Give me 30 days, I'll be back. We come back and we buy them. So, because I know people are like, oh, I ain't spent $6 million at one time. But I did over the course of the year, though. We definitely spent like $6 million just on houses last year. So you'll drop a big bag and it forces you to go get the rest of the money. Yeah, because it's a, it's a double thing, right? The bag going to entice them. They're like, oh, then we're working with a client with some paper. He just dropped cash, quarter million. And then I go look at my account like, damn, I'm down a quarter. Let me turn up. And then that's when y'all start seeing 12 videos a day. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> then somebody else in the family got a million dollar house. So yeah, so God, that, that's man. I just want to throw that into it. Real estate, I want because I, I be know people be feeling pressured and like, oh, I ain't got it right now. Y'all make them an offer. Just make them a cash offer to hold it down till you get the rest. They like the cash. They'll take it and they'll hold the house down. And you show like the longest one I ever did was 120 days. I threw them like forty thousand and they held it for me for four or five months and I came back and cashed out the other like eight hundred thousand. What happened? So if Let's say you do, a, it's called an open contract. Yeah. So you do an open contract for 90 days, but you don't have the rest of the money for the 90 days. Oh, you finna take that L. And keep that bread. Yeah. I had to have him for. I did one last year. My pops, he didn't say he won. It was my fault, right? So in the neighborhood I live in, it's 13 houses. I purchased four of them within the last year. No, it's 12 houses, one lot. I purchased a lot and three houses in the last year. So we own a quarter of the neighborhood right now. There was another house in there. He didn't even ask for it, but I just jumped the gun and went and put it, put down on it to give it to him. But then he ended up telling me like he didn't want it. Not that he didn't want it, but where he live at now is like a mile away from my gun store. And he was like, man, you know, we're going to have to move. I'm right here. I can oversee everything. So they ended up getting 140000 from me. And then the day, it was two days before it closed. Hold on, yeah, hold on, hold on. Hold on. They, you just gave him the 140, but he, he didn't agree to sell his house? No, he ain't had to sell his. I was going to buy his. Oh, he's one of the people. Did yeah. they agree? Yeah, no, they, they was ready. So they took my money like, okay, you got a four-month deal. Put the 140 down and come back. Mm-hmm. Two days before it's supposed to close, I owe them 760000 I hit my daddy. I'm like, so I'm finna, I'm finna close. And he was like, I just hear the hesitation in his voice. I'm like, dad, you know if you don't want to move, like, you can say that. I'd rather take the L on the 140 and keep my 760 than drop the whole nine and then you don't want it. So he's like, nah, I stay where I'm at. So I lost the 140. They don't, they don't give a penny of that back. You just take that L. Well, you were buying it just for your dad? Just for him. Why not just complete the other seven something and rent it out or something? Okay, bro. So for me, I like big flips. So renting a house out ain't enough for me. Me and, me and the wife done talked about flipping, renting out. And I'm like, but it's not enough money for me. Like, I like six figure transactions. So if it's not, if they ain't paying like $10,000 a night in rent, <laughs> I don't want it. I'm straight. <laughs> I'm good. So no, bro, I definitely thought of that, but I don't, not, not saying smaller increments don't excite me because small addict 
comes a becomes a lot. But just to be like, oh man, let me call my property manager and make sure they got that thousand dollars from Rodney Jones. Nah, I ain't. I'm not making that phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney pays or anything. I'm not, I'm not chasing that man by five grand. I ain't got it. Now five hundred grand, and yeah, we calling Rodney. We knocking oh on the gosh. door. Where the rent at? Yo, man, you might be the coolest <laughs> entrepreneur I've ever interviewed, man. Yeah, appreciate yeah. You, I want to. Uh, I want to say thank you, man. It's uh, thank um, you, bro. This has been a very enlightening conversation. Appreciate it because I'm starting to value, like. I'm starting to at least like evaluate what would I be willing to put down for my own sanity? Not, luckily, I like what I do now. Right. But I don't ever want to get so caught into the income generation that I can't let it go to go be happy. And bro, I've been there. Like, shout out to my lady because she's very intentional about... So bro, we have a cool... uh a cool makeup, right? Like, I love getting a lot of money. She doesn't like what comes with a lot of money. So it's a balance. Like, I'm going to go hunt. I'm going to, like, I'm the one in the room be like, yeah, I need a bill. She the one be like, I don't need that much. You know, I could, da 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 and I'm straight. This as long as you straight and I could buy you this in the family. I'm the one that's like, nah, like, I want our next career to be the size of a mega church. That's my, that's how I'm coming. Mm. Like, everything I'll be larger in life for me. So, it's a great balance, though, because she's been on me this year. But like, like one of our rules is, and it's from her, every time we buy, I buy something for one of them, I got to buy something for me. Because mm-hmm. I'm that person that like a totally forget about me. I won't eat. I won't do nothing. I just grind, grind, grind and be like, y'all happy? Y'all got what y'all need? Everybody good? So, uh, yeah, bro, having that conversation and then her and I was having some relationship issues, right? This, this is one of like the biggest epiphanies, right? This is literally like a month or two ago. I'm in my crib, 7,000 square feet. This house is worth like 1.5 million now. I'm on the phone with my realtor. I'm trying to buy a house in Vegas for like 4 million, another house, I think it was Albany for like 2 million. And then I seen a third house in Milledgeville that was like 800,000. I'm like, cool. I'm finna, I'm finna get my realtor to work a move, the same down payment thing with all three of them. Spend like half a mil between all three of them, and then I got to pay it off. I got four months to come up with like seven, eight million dollars. So I'm like, cool, you know, plan in motion. And then my right mind kicked in, right? Because me and her beefing, she done went to her mama house in Georgia. I'm back in Tampa, and I'm like, damn, I'm finna buy these houses. Like, who gonna hang out in them? Like, because <laughs> we're like, I'm, I'm literally sitting in my room, like, I don't even watch TV. I remember I had the TV on and all. Like, I'm watching TV, laying in the bed. On the phone, like, yep, just handling business, you know, da 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 da. And then, I, and then it hit me because me and her texting at the same time. And I'm like, damn, imagine having all that real estate, but don't nobody want to live with you in the real estate. And I was just like, but bro, just going back to what you were saying, and you, this for you too as well, and anybody else, it's very important that we are for ourselves what we are for others. Mm-hmm. So imagine like helping people to keep their families together and and self-love and teaching them how to build businesses and they taking the game we giving them and they got happy, healthy children and great relationships. And you you just over here paid and like, you know, outside with it. And I was just like, oh, no. Nah. Basically, bro, you ever seen Soul Man? Mm-mm. Oh. Well, ba- it was the part where Bernie Matt was like, not not literally, but he was like, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, them kids. Yeah. And right. that's the mentality I had. I was like, you know what? <laughs> F all y'all and y'all families, y'all children, y'all businesses, everything. I'm going home. I ain't messing with y'all no more, bro. So (laughs) nothing against them per se, but it was just more so me realizing like, how you pouring into the world and you empty internally or your crib in shambles. So nah, bro, self-love is a must. We'll get lost in the money and the success. That's a fact. That's a fact. Man, I appreciate you, man, appreciate for you, coming. Bro. I know y'all got a flight to catch. I got to do a quick commercial. I'm going to have you close this out, okay? okay. Um, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com. I don't know if you know about the the, the Morning Meetup. I heard about it. Every single morning, it's hundreds of entrepreneurs that I'm coaching and teaching entrepreneurship. I got to get you on there, man. Literally, I'm I think it, like, it's like over 500 people on the call every morning. Gotcha. And uh, Monday through Friday. So, um, yeah, go to themorningmeetup.com and be a part of it. Derek Grace, thank you so much. I got uh, one last question. And then you can close this out with something powerful and let everybody know how they can catch you. Where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Because I want to be able to watch this Derek Grace interview 
in, from five, five, ten years from now and say, yo, Derek said that five years ago. Right, right, right. What do you say? Um, five to ten years, bro, I'm sure I will be either underground or very, very secluded somewhere uh, with more children, more land, and just at peace, ignoring the hell out of the world intentionally. That's the only thing I can't foresee, bro. Is I'm gonna be somewhere remote with animals and my family, and we ain't really from the internet. Yeah, we we cool on the communication. Like I, I would love for my family to have certain days that we access our phones. Like if you're looking for us, we'll call you on Fridays. But other than that, leave That's us alone. Right. The other six, we just outside um, with our children, our animals, our acid, our mushrooms, and we just enjoying our lives and ignoring everybody. <laughs> Mushrooms. Derek, thank you so much, man. Please no let everybody know how to find you, how they can tap in with the network, man. Uh, and y'all, y'all can find me, Derek Grace 2, on all social platforms. Uh, my social platform is dg2tv.com. That's where y'all can find me. Whether you want to subscribe, you want to get in the know. If you're a creator and you want a place of no censorship and the freedom to really be who you are, come see us. If you want to subscribe and you know, you want to get a dose of that content, the real life, the fun, the cries, the happiness, the sadness. Subscribe. So no matter what side of the fence you're on, be sure to subscribe. And yeah, bro, um, we will have a million subscribers by Christmas. And I'm going to make sure I check in and let the world, I'll make sure I screenshot and let the world know. Like, I put everything on that. I And I, my last one, I bet a meal that we be worth the bill by my 34th birthday. Yeah. So we can, we can revisit this one in two years and we can see like, you know. Yeah, bro, pull it out, but I'm confident. It's easy. I love it. I love it. I think we got a, a video that we're going to share so everybody can check out and uh, yeah. go to the link. So um, thank you so much. Oh, close thank us you out, man. Me, bro. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Close us out with something, something. Just put a bow on this whole interview, man, as, as we get out of here. Um, the biggest thing I'm going to close out with y'all is I think we're ushering, ushering into an era where we're going to have to be way more intentional about having our voice heard, about being able to get our genuine thoughts out. So I just want y'all to be mindful, like, you can't overthrow the people that you wish to overthrow while housing your intellectual property on their platforms. I know y'all tired of being banned. Listen, y'all, I ain't been on live in like four months. Like, I get no love on Instagram. But anyway, whether it's DGTV or not, this ain't even a plug DGTV. I just want you to know these social platforms wouldn't have the level of monetization they do and they wouldn't be as big as they are if our culture didn't sprinkle our flavor on it. So just be mindful next time, you know, you ranting and raving, you teaching or whatever you're doing because they're making paper off our intellectual property. Mm -hmm. We getting likes and follows. That's over. So like I was saying yesterday, bro, my new motto is um, some people own the internet, but we own the internet. And that's how we moving, bro. If it ain't, if we can have complete control and be able to like go make commercial and, and advertisement deals off our intellectual property, then we ain't letting them do it either. I'm going to get some money and nobody ain't getting no money. Basically, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I want you to have the same mentality. I love it. Same thing, y'all. You got to be the benefactor of your business deal. Why are we still going into business? Like, what's the point of having a contract if it's not in your favor? You might as well just took whatever they was willing to hand you and just go be a good boy or girl and do what they said. Jeez. Listen, can't close it out no better than that, man. Do yourself a favor. One, go follow Derek Grace. Two, Thank you, uh, be a part of the network. Three, go get you some social proof, meaning go build something. But then I need you to come back to your community with all the information mm -hmm. and teach your community how you built what you built. All right? It's the only way our community grows. And after Absolutely. you're done teaching, then you can like chill like Derek. And yeah, stop just teaching. chill. You good. Yeah, just walk away. <laughs> just well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just get out of there. I appreciate you, bro. I think yeah, you're family, bro. Family. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Officially welcome you to DGTV. The only place, the only place you guys are gonna be uncensored. Today I'll be like, I don't wanna see you touching on the bitch. Untapped. Tomorrow I'll be like, I'm in the mood to suck on some pussy. An unbanished content. One of the biggest things that we're dealing with as of now in 2021 is the censorship. Freedom of speech is a thing of the past with the way that these social platforms are moving in 2021. 
Listen, there are no rules, no regulations. The only rules that we have at DGTV are the ones that we just happen to wake up that day and make. We can talk about whatever the fuck we want, you feel me? You may mess around and find yourself at home where you're able to express yourself. You got something to say, but you can't show nobody. Outside of you being able to make this your home and do what you need to do here, we also have a slew of shows that we bring to y'all with our debut. For the longest you guys have been wanting to know how do I parent. Derek and Derek We gotta have a family meeting. Are y'all ready for sex? Are you ready or not? No. How do I run business? Y'all only have $200. If you get to that register and you ain't got enough money, y'all gonna put some shit back because I'm not spending over $200. How do we work on and build a progressive relationship? Which ones haven't I done? Because I've definitely uh, made sexy what I love to you with my soul. With I've definitely... Soul, man. Take care of family, building an empire, hiring this relative, finding a relative. The A to the Z will be delivered to you guys with great slips. And of course, you already know we're the most dangerous family on the planet. Outside of that, we have Black Love and Fitness show that you guys are gonna get a huge kick out of. Welcome back for another episode of Surviving Fitness. Yeah, you signed yourself right up moving. for Let's some go. fucking hell. You get a dope mix of education, right, fitness, sexiness, strippers, uh, adults who can't spell, adults who can't count, a whole bunch of dope shit going on there. We got another interview style show that we're bringing to you guys called Amnesty. We're gonna be building and picking the brains of some of the most dangerous and controversial people of the culture. So, yeah, he thought we were talking about eating dog. <laughs> we're here at DGTV. We're going a step further. We're bringing them in, we're picking their brain, and we're getting everything you guys need. DGTV is 1000% independent down from the Cody to the bandwidth. We own it all, and it's here for you to join. The only rules that we have are the ones that we simply make. If you're looking for a place with uncensored, raw, and real content, you came to the right place.